Welcome to another episode of the Oracles, and I'm so excited about this about today's episode because this is the first time that we kick off the show with the name uh, of the show that we recently announced announced last week. So this is probably as big as last week's show. So I'm very very excited. Um, I've got my incredible co-host with me, Z Mazibu. Z, how are you doing? What I do? How are you doing? I'm Happy good, thank Tuesday. you. What's that? I was saying happy Tuesday. Yeah, happy I'm Tuesday. I'm going to be properly <laughs> tomorrow. So happy Tuesday to you. Yeah. <laughs> How's it there? How are you feeling? No, nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm I'm really I'm really excited. Um, I, I'm feeling yeah. good. Yeah. How about you? Same, man. I'm feeling excited because I feel like now we. We, we were on it, we were getting there, but now we like have a stamp of saying, this is us, this is our name, and we're just giving it to people out there. So it's a, it's a, it's a good feeling. I'm feeling very good about it. Yeah, because I, I feel like, um, I mean, we are building this um, a ship or, or car as we go. And I feel like right now we just, even though we've been moving this entire time, um, I think right yeah. now we just put on some, some proper wheels on it. Yes, and yes. yeah, so there, there's still a lot. There's still a lot that needs to be done. Still, uh, still have a yeah. long way to go. No, uh, but we are, but we are moving. We're moving, which we're excites me. We're keen on learning. Yeah, we want to learn. We want to do better. So, man, there's a long way that we have to walk. I have our running shoes on. So yeah. we're ready for it. Yeah, we're ready for anything. We're ready for everything um, that is coming. And you know, actually, well, the first question that I wanted to ask you today. Is that, um, and I don't know if you've ever had this conversation with uh, before, uh, just the two of us. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to, I want to know from you. Do you think that the, in hip hop there was a definitive top five? Ah, no way! <laughs> <laughs> you are not going to do that. No, really, because you know the reason I ask is yes. because I do not believe that there is like a proper, proper definitive top five. Mm -mm. Because um, you, you speak, you speak to a lot of guys, uh, and no, generally, no. when I speak to a lot yeah. of guys, there's two names that always pop up. It's Tupac and Biggie, um, and then you'll have sometimes you'll have Eminem in there, sometimes you'll have Jay Z in there. Jay -Z. Um, that, yeah. yeah, there's people who, for some reason, would put up or put in Kanye. I also understand why they would put him there. Understand, I understand. Yeah. But the, the but there's people who have him there. There's people who have um, Andre three thousand. There's people uh, have the game there. Yeah, there's some will, no some will have the game. You know? uh, yeah, there's there's just uh, like the thing for me is that there is no definitive top five. I do not believe that there is a definitive, uh, a definite uh, top five because everyone will have their own list. And that's, be, yes. and that's the reason why there's all these arguments. When someone just comes on and says, my top five, um, top five rappers of all time, dead or alive, um, it's this, 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 and this. And then an argument just begins. They'll argue, but then they forget how the sentence started. My top five. Yeah. Yeah. And also with my top five, it can change. Like next week, I could have a different one for different yeah. reasons. Because... I'm a firm believer of there's certain music that you listen to when you're in a certain state of mind, right? Yeah. And maybe when you were listening, when you're in that state of mind, you listen to a lot of Kanye. Yeah. You listen to a lot of um, Eminem or whatever. And for a long time, for years, those two, those two made up your top two, you know? Yeah. Then now you're in a better space, you're in an incredible space or whatever. And now you're listening to somebody else. You're listening to your Nas, you're listening to your Andre 3000, like, okay, you know, they, they, these two are my vibes, you know? Yeah. So Ngobako, as a person, your list can change. Not necessarily just everyone, you yourself, your list can change. This week, it can be different next week. Because I'll tell you now, there are years where I was like, Lil Wayne is top one, and it's like, I'm, there's no two ways about it. Best and that's I'm like, nah, guys, give me Jay-Z on any day, yeah. you know? So it, it, I feel like it depends. It depends on how you're feeling also even on the day because people can catch you on your wrong side and like, you know, today I'm a thug and all my and my top five is just cheese, you know? Yeah. And somebody's like, nah, I'm taking it easy. And my top five is just people who are nice, who are fun, 
who are upbeat and chirpy and all of that. So I feel like there's no definite top five. We, guys would be lying, man. I don't think anyone has a definite top five. Yeah, there can't be a definitive top five. Um, more especially when you consider the fact that guys like J Electronica are never considered. Um, guys like Black Thoughts are never talked about. And these mm. guys are incredible. Lyrically, they are incredible. There's very few people who can touch these guys. Um, even really? like just, just talking about Black Thought, Black Thought has this thing, um, I forget what it's called, um, but his breathing um, is also part of his raps. Like um, mm-hmm. he would just rap, he'd freestyle. There's a freestyle that I saw he yeah. did on, um, uh, what, what's his name? Um, on, on, a, on a radio station, Funk Massa Flex, yes. Um, he mm-hmm. had a he had a freestyle on Funk Master Flex's um, radio show, and he was rapping, freestyling for like ten minutes straight. Man. Ten minutes straight, just freestyling, and part of it. The breathing part, that you have to have the yeah, like the it's it's incredible because it's and he was rapping. He had his hat on like he like he usually does. He had his jacket on, mm-hmm. and he was sweating while he was rapping. And we'll just keep going for like 10 minutes straight. And it's part of his, like his, his breathing, it's part of his raps. Like he, I, I don't know how he does it, um, but, it, I, and I forget what it's called, but that guy is just incredible. And how many guys do you know? How many people do you know who would go on a freestyle for 10 minutes? There's very few, if any at all. <laughs> A few and looking even past the point of a freestyle, even with the song that they recorded in studio, right? And yeah, give it take seven minutes, put them on stage and have them rap that song. They won't do it. Yeah, never. They can't. <laughs> they can't, never. you know. Now, this is a song that's been recorded, they've, been, they've performed it multiple times, but the breathing techniques are still not on par because they're moving around the stage, you know. Yeah. They're shouting, they need to be on the beat and everything. I like when they're in the studio. In the studio, people spend hours and hours and hours. So they probably did like the first 18 bars or 16 bars and stopped, came back with the hook, came back with the bridge or whatever. But now on stage, they need to do all of that at once. And most people can't do that. Yeah, like I even most- notice it with these songs that are more lyrical, because at times it's easier to perform a song that is more turn up song, you know? Yeah. Because when you know you only have four bars, then it's a uh, it's a catchy like lyric and people are just singing along. But if you're going to get on stage and, for example, rap, what you call a song by Cuesta, mm. you put in La Home, oh, yeah. for example. He's rapping, rapping there, you know. The only time he rests is when Youngster is rapping. Yeah. You know, so when you get on stage and have to do such a song, it's going to take a lot from you. Yeah, it does. Because you're dropping bars, you want every single word to be audible. Yeah, it, and you know, of all the, uh, I would say, mainstream rappers in South Africa, mm-hmm. I think someone who has his uh, breathing techniques on lock is maybe Zagwe. I think Zagwe, his breathing techniques yeah. are is just yeah. on another level, yeah. especially. Mm-hmm. And I hope, he, and if he sees this, I hope he doesn't get offended. But you consider the fact, you consider his weight. Um, first great, of all, yeah. because um, the bigger you are, the the, the more um, challenging your breathing can be. And this guy is, a, yeah, I think he's more or less my size, maybe. And he also, this guy he has to rap, he has to breathe, and he just do, does it so incredibly. He, he it's just like he just flows. He, it's, it's just pure on on there. Um, if that's if that's yeah. the word that I have to use, um, I think he's the one. He's the one rapper. In South Africa, it's whose history. breathing technique is yeah. just incredible. Like, actually, you're touching on Zawe, right? It's yeah. something that he said when he started working out. Because there's a year, I think, 20, even last year, I think he was working out. But mostly 2020, 2019, 2020, he started yeah, working out. Yeah, even this year, he was And he started wanting to be healthy. That's the, yeah, he started wanting to be healthy. That was the main reason he started. Because he, he could feel himself, he was struggling to keep yeah. up. You know, he would take a lot of breaks and now he's not presenting himself the way he wants to be heard. Because yeah. he is about bars at the end of the day. And performing, you want people to hear those bars. Remember how last time I touched on what Big Zulu does? He would yeah. actually get the DJ and be like, kill the beat because I want them to hear me. Yeah. You know? So when you're a rapper or a rapper, you want people to hear you. And if you're struggling to breathe, you, you won't really get it right. 
And at times, I always say I appreciate the gents from Soda House. Oh, yeah. Those guys. Those, those guys were amazing. With I mean, yeah, those guys were amazing with their breathing. Man. And, and this <laughs> like is. You hear everything. Yeah. And that's the thing, like if you're going to be on the same label or you're going to be trying to get on the same path as Eminem, there's no time to play around. Because M Eminem as well, his breathing technique, like he's he's a fast rapper. He's like, um, and I think he's also considered a chopper, if I'm not mistaken, um, that, that kind of rapping. Yeah, like he just has his breathing proper. He has his lines proper. He has his rhymes proper. Everything is just proper. So if you're going to be um, on that same line, on that same level, trying to get on the same level as Eminem, um, the Slaughterhouse guys, they had no time to play around. And, you know, and, and this is the same guy that you you will be um, sitting in studio with. Yeah, even though it does yeah. not go on, onto, the, onto a record, but he'll be in studio with you guys. And you want to impress him, basically. You will Definitely. want to impress Eminem. Um, because, it, I mean, part of your own... Is, I, I think they would also take it as an audition, in a way, to say that every line yes. has to matter. Every, every verse has to matter. Because if this guy yeah. wants to do an album, he has to, he has to have me... Yeah, he has to have me in mind um, to, for, yeah. for a feature or whatever. And once okay. you get to, on, onto an Eminem album, that just takes you on a different level because people now also start to take you more seriously than before. Yes. They look at you differently. I mean, who is this guy to feature an Eminem's project, you know? Yeah. And now, because I mean, also with me, I have, I've got some new favorites from teachers. Yeah. Not that I heard a person from his own track the first time around and I love them. I hear this person on a feature and I'm like, who is this? This person is nice. You know? Yeah. I know how I how nice DSPs are. You can literally just click on the name, it leads to their music. Then you find the entire catalog. You're like, sure. okay, yeah. I mess with this person. So you'd want to get featured on an Eminem song or an Eminem album because you know, once people are how many people play Eminem's album? Eminem can have 14 million streams with them, you know. Yeah. So you know that you're part of that 14 million. You're like, okay, there's something I did here. So it's the importance of, I believe, the, the artistry. Because I feel like a lot of people go into music or hip hop with this thing of, I just want to make music. I'm a good rapper, I just want to rap. Forgetting that there's a lot that goes into it. Yes, you're nice with the bars, but how are you projecting yourself? How are you presenting yourself? Are you able to maintain your composure when you start, you know, feeling like I'm getting too deep within it? Yeah. Are you able to hear a good beat with the, with the lyrics work together? Because I feel like as an artist, that's also part of your job. Yes, you have a producer, but you need to be there, man. You need to be there hands on. Don't just lay the verse and bounce. Yeah. Now you're and not impressed with the numbers at the end of the day, but you always didn't play a part in compiling the entire thing. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that go into making music. And I feel like a few artists, take it for granted basically yeah and you know talking about that um i think uh, i heard something a couple of years ago about outcast um under 3000 and um uh yeah under 3000 and uh big boy is that yeah. in the early in the early stages early years of starting the of starting the group what they would do is that they would go jogging um every day and while they are jogging, they'll be wrapping out their lines. And the reason for that was because they wanted to work on their breathing as well. Uh, the, that's how they were working on their breathing technique. That's how they were working on how they on their delivery as well. To say, Guzzi, um, I, I want to have the... It, it's basically like a practice session. It was not necessarily yeah. about their health, but they were jogging because they were trying to get their level of rapping to where they wanted it to be. And that's how seriously yeah. they took their art, that I'd rather wake up in the morning, go jogging. And while I'm jogging, I'll be rapping oh, out yeah. my lines yeah. and working on my breathing technique, working on my delivery. Um, and, 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 that's, and that took them and placed them to where they are today. And and also at the same time talking about these guys outcasts, um, I also read a tweet um, this past week, no last week, um, about mm -hmm. talk, talking about Andre 3000. That if you're going to mention Andre 3000 as one of the best rappers out there, you have to also include a big boy, 
because both of them they are essentially on par as one they mm-hmm. they are basically one um they every day they they, they just go uh, they, every every time they went on a record they were just going head to head and and honestly I, I i should agree i would agree on that because when you listen to to hundred thousand and, and you listen to big boy it's not like the it's not like the um the, the throne, for instance, with Jay Z and Kanye, where yeah. you, you always have a, a definite um, one one of them having the best verse or whatever um, on, 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 a, on a track. But with Outcast, it's always uh-huh. it's always difficult to say who had the best verse on there because of how good they they both are. And I feel like that's what we need in music. I, that's what we, you know, when you say earphones are not enough, inject the thing into my bloodstream. Yeah, yeah. That's what we want in music, you know. All Because I want to, I love music. Music is a part of me, you know. I live, breathe, and eat music constantly. Gizung Vuga, I'm that first person. After I play, I'm like, where are my earpods, you know? <laughs> I'm that person. So no, that's what I want to listen to. I want to hear good music. And when you listen to such guys, you're like, I understand why I love this creation. Yeah. You listen to Andre, like, yeah, no, it makes sense why I love music, you know? Yeah, it's so many things that ha- like, and music music heals for it most does. part. Music heals, and when you listen to it, you just want to hear good things away. Not necessarily the lyrics, but you want it to touch you in the parts that you didn't think you'd ever reach. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and no, talking about um, how it makes you feel, um, because I, I, I read I read another tweet that was talking about certain effects, uh, the effects of what certain um, drugs do or bring in to, to the music. Um, but would you also agree that um, drugs have a role in the kind of music that people make? Yeah, I, I, I'd agree to a very <laughs> large extent. Yeah. I'd agree. <laughs> as... I don't want to say bad, but as more so nice as it, is, as it is that some people need to depend on substance to create good music. Yeah. But unfortunately, it is. There are people who have tried to be sober, you know? Yeah. Who have tried to not even have a cigarette and go into the studio. And without feeling, besides feeling like they're not okay, they are, the, the work wasn't as best. Yeah. They could, like everybody could tell, good see, no, nah, this is not it. But the minute they eat, not even just not even a joint or what, but a cigarette, the minute they have that, yeah, give them two minutes to smoke. When they come back, it's a completely different person. Yes, that person obviously has gotten used to the substance over the years, but then that's when we get the best music from it. Yeah. So the way their music makes us feel, it feels like a drug to us. Some of them literally take the drugs to give us that music. Yeah, and in, you know the oh. Because the, all of that, it makes sense. It's true. And you you look at guys like Eminem, for instance, um, while he was still on um, doing the drugs that he used to make, um, you can hear the difference from when he was still on drugs and when he was um, clean um, afterwards. And yeah, you, you, you can you can basically, you can tell the difference. It's very, very uh, yeah. proper. Now he was no longer talking about his mother the same way that he he, yeah. he used to talk about her. He was no longer talking about Kim the way that he used to talk about yes. her. Um, the level of violence in the music is no longer the, the, the same anymore. Um, and, and, you know, uh, because what, the reason why I asked them, uh, and this is a conversation I've had with uh, LTD Fresh before, um, and we, we used to talk about the, the effects of codeine, for instance. Um, we know that uh, codeine in, 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 in rap, it came about uh, much earlier in, in Texas, basically. Um, I, I don't I'm not like sure. It. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh. <laughs> the, like, like codeine, it came in, it started off basically in, in Texas. Um, <laughs> the, that uh, chopped and screwed sound um, that, that you used to hear. Uh, back, yeah. back, back in the days, you know that's very. It's, so, it's almost slowed down um, the sound, mm-hmm. and the, the the voices are also altered and, and, and whatever. Yeah. Um, started back then by a DJ called DJ Screw, 
um, which is where the, the name of the, the, the subgenre comes from. Because what, exactly. they, what he would do is that he would create mixtapes, like songs already that were out there. Um, he would create mixtapes and would slow down the, the entire sound and everything just sounded the way that, that it sounds. Um, and a lot of the guys, they wouldn't understand what was going on. People would come to the studio, um, just sit there and try to listen to, to his music, but to his mixtape or whatever, what was going on. And they didn't understand why it sounded like that. To them, it was just trash, uh, basically, until he mm -hmm. gave them a cup of codeine. They started to get codeine together in there. And then when it started to hit, that's when the music started to make sense to them. And it just blew up all, all, all over Texas um, with all yeah, the, yeah. the guys where uh, that specific sound started there. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just, it, it, it grew to where we are today. And I think that sound, how it started back there, it also has an effect where it, we see today with guys like designer and whatnot, um, these guys who do mumble rap. A lot, it's, it's a lot of kids who were doing um, codeine um, for a while. Um, they've started drinking codeine basically when they started in, in, to drink in high school. Um, and while they, they, they did codeine, it obviously over the years, it messed up with their speech. Because a lot of the guys, if you do codeine long enough, yes. it messes with your mm -hmm. speech. And, you know, and no longer hear what you're saying. And now these guys are also, are also now trying to rap, but we cannot hear what they're saying. Yeah, hence now there is a mumble rap and also because of the prolonged use of the of the codeine it also messes with the emotions and and whatnot all these drugs yeah. and which is why today a lot of the rappers young young kids today they do all they do this mumble rap and they also um their the message in them it's, it's talking about depression it's talking about um it's talk of suicide all these things um so and they're dying young yeah and they're dying young they're dying young. Um, even with Lil Wayne, you, you listen to a lot of Lil Wayne um, interviews. You cannot hear half of what he's saying uh, because. <laughs> Are you thinking <laughs> about Lil Wayne says? <laughs> yeah, we, I it mean, takes can, it's a lot. It takes yeah, a lot. Yeah, we can no longer hear what he's saying, and he always has a cup with him. Usually, has a cup with him, and he's usually yeah. codeine in there. Um, so a lot of a lot of the music, and and someone broke it down with uh, with a lot of drug use. Um, it's talking about uh, the, but the, the, the kind of uh, drugs that um, are used um, having a sort of a sort of an effect um, or whatever the message in the in the music is. And this guy is, is a psychologist, by the way. Um, so he basically he was he knew what, what he was talking about. Guys, codeine is literally um, cough syrup, right? Yeah. And whenever you get cough syrup, whether it's most of the time it's a prescription, because it makes you drowsy, it makes you sleepy. Yeah. So obviously when you're drowsy and you want to sleep, your speech is kind of slurred. Yeah. Yeah. That's always I don't understand how someone thought, yeah, this is gonna work, this is gonna make me high and I'll still be okay. It's not, you're gonna zone out a bit. Because yeah. when you have cough syrup, you get those meds, you sleep. Yeah, that's why now they when they speak they sound like that. And if you're gonna have it over like a long period of time, your speech even when you're not a high or you haven't been drinking that thing, you're going to sound like that. It's just like weed for most people. Ninety percent of this, there's ten percent who are still fine. They still speak as fast as Eminem, you know. Yeah. But others, once they start smoking and it's over like a lot of years, their speech changes. Yeah, it does. They start speaking slower. They start processing things at a slower pace you know it affects a lot of things as much as some people would say drugs are cool I, you know some people would um be like i'm a no i will say i'm a functional al alcoholic some people are functional drug addicts unfortunately yeah. they do based when they're high on something yeah but when you look at it internally it's messing us up because for most of us, that's why our anxiety is peaking the way it is. Mm. That's why you can't relax. Your heart is constantly beating like crazy. You're getting panic attacks. You see from a simple drink like your energy drinks, the, the, the caffeine in, like, in those things is a lot. So if you have a panic attack from that thing, what more are you going to get from a, from a codeine? Yeah. And what more are you going to get from cocaine? It's a lot. 
Yeah, because the, the effects that, um, the, in terms of speech that it has, I believe, mm. um, is that it's similar to, to the prolonged use of alcohol. When you get drunk yes. quite a lot, um, it, but the, the difference between alcohol and codeine is that codeine, um, it, 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 it speeds the, the effects. So it happens sooner um, that, than oh, before. Yeah. You listen to, I mean, we, we have relatives who've been drinking for as long as we've been alive or even longer. Yeah. Um, and the drunk you, uncles. Yeah, the drunk uncles. <laughs> and you hear, even when they're sober, you, you hear the way that they speak. Um, yeah. they, they still, even though they're, they're, they're sober, when they speak, they still sound like they're drunk. Um, and even a case in point, um, if you do not have a drunk uncle, um, listen to some, listen to Jeremy Clarkson, for instance, and he's a he's a perfect yeah. example because there are yeah. clips of him on on the internet, so you can go back to his early days on TV, and then compare it to today. You can hear his, the the way that he speaks. You can you can hear that he gets drunk uh, quite a lot. Now, uh, but Absolutely. anyway, yeah, going back to to the old whole drug thing. Okay, now this guy uh, on on Twitter, he is uh, Boho Buji, yeah, at Boho Buji, and he's a he's a licensed drug counselor, and um, he says, okay, there is um, opioids and lean. Um, they um they, they've created basically mumble rap, and then there's mm-hmm. crack and coke, which um have an effect on New Jack Swing. Um, I don't know if you remember New Jack Swing. Um, yeah. See, yeah, it's guys like Bo yeah. Jodeci and, and whatnot mm-hmm. back then in the 90s. And then yeah. there is Molly, which um, is part of EDM. And then there's uh, psychedelics, which are part of, a part of acid rock or, or metal, or me- metal rock. Mm-hmm. So these are the, like the, the kind of drug drugs, um, they have an effect on the kind of music um, that people make and the kind of message um, that that people send out through the, through their music, and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It makes sense because you hear, I mean, Eminem, for instance, who was high on cocaine quite a lot, and he was he was heavy on the on the um, on on violence basically, um, mm-hmm. because he would take a lot of um, a, a, lot, a lot of cocaine, and also, I mean, he did a lot of a lot of different drugs. Um, there is, I think he, he also did Molly and he took psychedelics as well. And psychedelics are, are, are mushrooms, um, for, yeah, for instance, yeah, yeah the, those kind of drugs. Mm-hmm. And you, you could hear you make it. Make his own yeah. out. Yeah, you, you, could, you could hear it in, in the music. Also, you know, another thing um, that is very, I wouldn't necessarily say a touchy subject, but it's the accessibility of these drugs. Yeah especially in the states yes we're not from there we haven't been there but then you can from reading from listening to watching documentaries you can tell oh, see, these people had easy access to the drugs so so many of them could be getting over the counter you see like you could literally get them without a prescription yeah you know and i feel like that also with the age these people can go to the farmers the drugstore they call it at 14 and they can get these drugs and they leave and that's how um what you call I forgot is it aquafelix the the cost syrup in this country right. that's how it literally got to a point where you need to get a prescription later to get it because kids are working from school go into the pharmacy get aquafelix go buy sprites and drink it when you ask them for what there's no reason they think yeah. it's cool because no way is doing it you know yeah and and it's also part of what they picked up in the music um, the music it sells the that message of um, mm-hmm. of taking these drugs, um, but I, I I remember I think um, re, uh, I read uh, I think sometime last year um, because the the cough syrup it use, they used opioids in there, um, but now they they no longer I think there, there was now they, they've stopped using opioids in. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and, and the cough medicine because people are buying it for these reasons. And what people don't also don't, don't know about uh, the effects that opioids have, for instance, um, or, or lean has on, on their body is that it messes with their nerve centers. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, part, it's partly the reason why Lil Wayne has been having a lot of seizures. Or it, seizures, or it is yeah. believed that the reason why he's been having a lot of down. seizures. 
Yeah, you, you shut your whole body shuts down. There's people who um, who have died from an, from an overdose of, of taking yeah. of, of taking cough syrup. So uh, people do not understand just how dangerous yeah. um, it, it is, and it messes up a lot of kids. It really messes exactly. up. Exactly. I kids. don't. I don't take cough syrup, no matter how bad my flu is. I'm like, I'd rather have lozenges because I wake up feeling worse than I was before I slept. Yeah. And that for me just doesn't make sense. So I'm like, when people do this for fun, what is your end goal? <laughs> what are you trying to achieve? You know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so really... crazy to me because I'm like, why? Yeah, and What's it's really point? not worth it. It's really not worth you know? it. Yeah. yeah. It so... becomes a thing of each to its own, man. We're all adults. People want to do what they want to do. And we're not here to judge, just here raising our opinions. That's yeah. It. Yeah, that's it. It's just our opinion. And there's just one thing I wanted to ask. Something caught my eye this past few days. Yeah. You remember how last week we were speaking about the, the streaming numbers like on DSPs? Yeah. This morning, no, this morning, yeah, I saw that Costa Teach. Is it Costa Teach? Yeah, it's Costa Teach. I don't yeah. know how to pronounce his name. Yeah. <laughs> Him, his, his big flexor song, it reached a, hundred, a million views. I know, 11 million views on YouTube. 11 million. 11 million, right? Oh. And that's and it's a new, not a new song, but maybe from last or the year before, I could be wrong. Yeah. But it's a fairly new song. Then over the weekend, I saw that e Freedom of Fame by Blacklist, the remix with Reason and Pro. Yeah. It only reached a million views this past weekend. Nah. Okay. And that song has been out for years, close to a decade. I could be wrong, it's going to be corrected, but it's been out for years. So what I'm going to hear, does the number of views on YouTube now speak to how creative an artist you are? Do they solidify your, your, your presence in the industry and how great you are? Or it's just a matter of it was hyped in that moment and obvious people went to watch it because they wanted to make a TikTok with it. And here I'm speaking to Costa Teachers and Big Flexer. Because now I learned of the song on, on TikTok. Yeah. But I never went to watch the video. I'm not interested, you know. He's not my cup of tea, which is perfectly fine. He has his cup of tea. Yeah. But with Blacklist, I obviously went and I watched the video because I'm a fan. I like his lyrical content. Yeah. So I'm asking him, does now looking at a million views in almost a decade to 11 reviews in a couple of months or a year, does that speak to how great you of an artist you are or your reach and does it solidify your space in the industry, especially this local industry that we have? Um, I think it depends on what we are looking at. Um, if we are talking lyrically, uh, because we, we started the show talking about uh, the top five. If, yeah. we're, if we're looking lyrically, I don't think Cosa Teach would definitely not make um, the top five. In, in South Africa, <laughs> lyrically, <laughs> it, it wouldn't it wouldn't make the it wouldn't make the top five of anyone, um, or at least well, of of most people. But that, now we are talking about um, the, the the mainstream, what, what people listen to. Because I, I think what what we need to be honest about is that every genre has sort of like a a pop um, a feel to it. Um, you yeah. guys that like Tage he makes music uh, for for people. It, it's it's basically how how we would say it in in, in hip hop in, in hip hop uh, terms. He makes music for the club, basically. Yeah. If you go anyway, if you go to any event, any outdoor event where uh, people just want to have a good time, and hip hop is the main thing, you are. Definitely going to hear Costa Teach, Costa music, and mm -hmm. he would definitely get booked for for such events. And then on the other hand, you have Black Lairs. Black Lairs is a is more of a lyrical person. He is yeah. looking to to make it like his his main focus is how can he have the best sixteen? How can he do the best sixteen for this particular beat? for this particular mm -hmm. moment with these guys that are making this music with. He's not concerned about hype um, as such. He's mm -hmm. not concerned about um, having his music uh, played on, on radio or played in clubs every now, every now and then. Um, that, that's not his main thing. 
So I don't think that, um, that, but like I said, it depends on what we're looking at. Um, if we, I mean, because on both sides, where you have someone who's, who's doing it for, for the mainstream, and then you have someone who's doing it purely for the art of writing, uh, purely for the art of hip hop, uh, taking it back to, to where it, it, it's supposed to be. They both have their place. Um, I think it can. There's a sort of a, a balance where we can say, "Would we'll see? Are we talking about? Um, I forgot which term you use. Like, uh, does it solidify you? And uh, as as what what was that that you said? As being great. What 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 was it? Like, does it solidify solidify your spot in this industry? And does it show would we'll see how great of an artist that you are? Because there are people who are pushing crazy numbers but then you wouldn't give them time of day personally as yourself. Then there are people yeah. you, you know play their music day in, day out, but they're not even putting a fraction of those numbers. Yeah, so it but, doesn't make you how great you are. Does it show your stance in that hip hop industry or any industry basically, but in the music industry? Well, the, yeah, the, like uh, for, uh, for, for both, they both have their place. Um, I believe that they both have their place. Because with, with Costa, um, assuming that because and I'm not and I'm not saying that um, it, it is done by guys like Costa or anyone in South Africa. Um, this thing of uh, farming or harvesting streams, where you have um, computers basically streaming your your music um, if, all the time. Um, but um, for for Costa, if, let, let's say that the 11 million views are organic. It's just people who are um, listening at home or, or wherever. Then it shows who yeah, yeah. how much he's loved um, by yeah, fans, yes. how, yeah, he, by how much people love his music. Yeah, and then with uh, guys like Black Lairs, we know Black Lairs. You and I listen to to Black Lairs um, mm-hmm. more more often than than most people. We know how good he yeah. is, um, and yeah. we love we just love his music, especially because it's got pro on there. Um, pro yeah. also being one of the best lyricists that we that we've yeah. ever had um, in the country. So uh, I think for on, on that there's a balance for for both. Um, both have their place in terms of solidifying just how great they are and their their place in the in the industry and how good they they really are. Because I mean, 11 million views uh, is quite a lot. And it shows just how much. Remember, um, by the way, because I think um, Akasa Tech, you can pit him basically in the same space as guys like Uncle Vinny. Remember Uncle Vinny last year when it was his birthday, how much uh, people showed up. I think it was in Bram. Like people, mm-hmm. kid, young kids were just going crazy. They wanted to see Uncle yeah. Vinny. And that time, Uncle Vinny is not even an artist. He's not even a, a I was rapper. about to ask, what does Uncle Vinny do? I like, don't know what he does. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what he does, <laughs> but I, I just know, I don't, don't want to sound like a jerk, no, but then because I, I asked my boys the other day, I'm like, guys, I don't want to sound like a jerk or um, the snacks, but I genuinely want to find out what does Vinny do. Yeah, I, I, the, like, does, give me an answer. doesn't he dance? Because I remember I saw, I once saw a video of him, like, there were two Rolls Royce uh raids, if I'm not mistaken. Like he just jumped out of one of them and he he was just dancing. I think that that's what he does. And he, he's moving with all these uh big guys basically. Big artists. Uh, yeah, 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 with a with a big artist. He's probably there on like I think he might be more of a hype man. Um man. Through, yeah, through okay. his dancing or whatever. Okay, it just okay. brings Makes the sense. hype to yeah, it brings the hype to to events, which also is an art in itself because not everyone can move a crowd. And I wanted seen, to say, yeah. I wanted, I, if that's what he does, man, I respect him because it it takes a lot for a person to be grooving Thursday to Monday every week. Yeah, it takes a lot. No, um, it's a, it's it a, lot. a lot. Yeah, and and this and now we're talking about someone who actually dances, They're probably on stage dancing for like maybe exactly. an hour or something, and people get get burnt out just holding a mic and True. moving back and yeah. forth, uh, rapping. Yeah. Uh, so for him to be dancing, oh for i mean from thursday until sunday um it's quite a lot it's quite a lot but yeah anyway we're, <laughs> we're, we're, talking, yeah, we're, we're talking about uh the whole solidifying um yeah. Pres- yeah like everyone has their own place i believe um 
But I hear, you know, there's also one point I want to touch on. Do you think Costa, I'm focusing on Costa now, do you yeah. think he would have had these 11 million views if it wasn't for the dancing trends on TikTok? Because um, Big Flex is that song that has the dance behind it. Yeah. So uh, I think from then, people just went now and said, okay, who's this Costa Titch Then they Googled him or they found a YouTube video. So, because I'm looking back to Inkalagat. Inkalagat is nicer for me compared to a Big Flexer. But the numbers are not even close to yeah. Big Flexer, you know? Yeah. Um, There's another song that he, I forgot the name. He, I think he uses a black girl's name, but I forgot the girl's name. It's a song now. It's out. It's nice. Nicer than Big Flexer. Numbers far from it so i'm saying now do you also be like yeah this is the target audience this is who he's catering to if his numbers don't match up because uh, you know if, if i put a cubs are here cubs's numbers match up in the past five years cubs are small you yeah. know because he's dead good of an artist but it comes up well, out of his entire catalog it's just that one song that is pushing a million uh, 11 million views does that also still say this guy has solidified his space in the industry has taken a space basically um, I think numbers like that, because now we're talking about the involvement of uh, TikTok, where people are, yeah. are, are using these things, are using this app um, to discover music, basically. And they are discovering new dances. And remember that yeah. TikTok now, it, 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 it's a global thing um, exactly. everywhere. And trends, they they go global, like in, in days. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah they're, they're just everywhere. And when people hear this song, they... They want to know who it is. So exactly. they live in million. I don't think it's, most of it is not South African, probably. It's, it, yeah, it's probably not South African um, fans yeah. or, or, or it's, yeah, South African people. Um, it's people who've discovered this, this song uh, through TikTok and they want to hear the entire thing. And uh, there, there was also um, a time uh, just, just recently when people were talking about how um, how horrible the songs are um, that that are used as, as trends. I on am TikTok one of those people. Where, <laughs> where, <laughs> no, I haven't said out. I haven't said on Twitter or anything. But yeah. now after I hear a song, I'm like, but guys, <laughs> TikTok needs to be people need to be locked up because no way you can't be hiding such a thing because you only hear like 15 seconds of it, like the song is fire. And yeah. You go to Spotify, you search for it, like no ways. You're like nah, guys, this can't be it, you know. <laughs> yeah, but Nakona, uh, and this right now we're not we're, when you're saying this, we're not necessarily about the talk, talking about Costa, because big people mm-hmm. love Big Flexer, um, even outside of TikTok, and that shows outside, yeah. what the yeah yeah yeah, yeah it shows it shows what the eleven million streams that people love. I've the seen song. that song at group. People lose their minds. Yeah, and no, there are songs where people just know like. A part of it like they know maybe the, the hook or the chorus or whatever yeah. with big fix that kids know the entire song from beginning to end yeah and and you know that this thing of making songs popular um it, it's not just a tiktok thing it's always been um like yeah. that and it's how atama forgot it by the way also at some point how he was selling his music is that mm-hmm. every lead song from an album it had to come with a new dance and when people hear, yeah, and people want, when people want to do a specific dance, they want to hear a specific song. Uh, mm-hmm. And th- th- that's how they, they, he sold his music, you know, partly. Um, same with Umlando, Umlando Challenge. People knew, got to know the song because of the Umlando Challenge. And these mm-hmm. are just, just two examples that are music, but a lot and of them saw they great. Yeah, it's it, doing it, the same thing right now, you know. With, yeah, with, is it man? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw, I saw that one. Um, I saw that one, and it's it's always been a thing where if a song is accompanied by a dance, then the song is definitely going to blow up. If the if the dance is good enough, and the people love to do the dance, then the song is a it's a surefire way to have your song blow up and be number one. Um, but in Nakona, if the song is not that great itself, it's just going to be hard for a short period of time. And people are just going to incorporate the dance with, um, with other songs. So, yeah, like um, having a dance as part of a, of, of a song, it's a, to, even today with, with the, the, the streaming thing. Great marketing um, tool. 
Yeah, it's a marketing tool. It's a marketing tool and it's an effective one, it seems. It is. Yeah, it is. It really is. It works, man. Because at the end of the day, we as artists, everybody's just trying to get their music out there. So yeah. they'll do it every way they know how. And if yeah. it works, why not? Yeah, why not? Um, I mean, everyone just wants to eat at the end of the day. They want to eat through their, their music. That's so because <laughs> Cyril's economy. Yeah. <laughs> off track here a bit but i'm looking at the cars at the filling station right now i'm like guys noise Yo, you know you he, still in petrol stations oh because gas was going up but not like this but now people like us 25 friend is a lot for one liter it's yeah. a lot it's so a pe- lot if people are gonna make music on tiktok it's fine get your coin i'm supporting that it's okay <laughs> <laughs> it's okay honestly <laughs> And now I'm even starting to understand why people are doing that. You know, like I, I, like the over the past two years or so, I, I would understand why people do like the cash in transit highs. Uh, but now I understand even better um, than, than before. <laughs> you, you know, the whole of plastic, I'm like, guys, personally, no? I'm not judging anyone right now who's a criminal. As long as you're not murdering anyone, as long as you're not trafficking anyone, not raping anyone, <laughs> I guess get your coin. <laughs> That's what we're living in. So honestly, but to be quite honest, we understand a lot of things right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... For so even... if people are going to make songs about a whistle, hey, guess it's fine. If yeah, it's make fine. songs about the birds. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Okay. As long as you get do your it. bookings and you make your sales. Yeah, just, just do it. <laughs> Because I was listening to, I was listening to a song. I don't know it to this day. I don't think I listened to it. Um, there's this new song here. I think it's Robert Boy. Yeah. Just like his old songs, like locations. I don't know the songs. I just know that parts. Location, because it's on Instagram. It's trending, you know? Yeah. That is a new one. I think it's Salary. Yeah. Salary, Salary. Yeah, that's the one. I don't know the song. I'm not going to listen to it. It's not my vibe. But I can tell you, he's getting bookings of that simply because it's a trend on TikTok. And he's a great MC. He's a great hype man. So now when they book him, they don't only just book him as a hype man, they book him as an MC because they can also play drums, they can book him as that, they can book him as the performer, rapper, you know, yeah, anything to make bread. So I, as long as it's you getting a coin and just making music, go ahead, guys. Yeah, and, and so yeah, this is me hinting at you. So if you have a song in mind and you want to put me on it, put me on it, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> and you know, uh, <laughs> the, the, talking about Robert Boy, I uh, actually discovered today um, that he also that he also raps. Um, and he does. Yeah, I, I, the that, guy is multifaceted, man. Robert Boy is good. I'll give him that. Yeah, I might and, not be a target audience for his music. Okay. Yeah. Have you heard him play drums? No, I haven't. I haven't. And the thing is uh, about Robert Boy, I discovered that I think I also discovered this this year. Discovered it this year. Um, his father, I think, is um Zokembuli. Is it the dad I, or the uncle? Because I heard that as well. I, I, I because what I've heard is that he uh, like Zoke Zokembuli is is his father. That that that's what I heard. And now uh, yeah, I also saw that. Then some people say no, he's the uncle. But whatever the case, but, he grew up in a musical po- poetry background, so it's yeah. Because that, that, that thing makes it easy for someone to fall in love with music and be good at so many things, having yeah. a musical background. Yeah, because even now when I look at him, when when I see his pictures, I can see the resemblance uh, with yeah. with, uh, with Um from but, the height, then the yeah. voice. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it, it was actually today that I discovered that he raps. Um, I was listening to um, some of Land Rose's music, um, as you were telling me about about him. Yeah. Um, that, that song that you were talking about, uh, it's, a, it's the new national anthem, right? Um, that you talked That's about really last week, guess. rapping in in seven different languages, that and is fluent soul. in each and every one fluent. of them. Fluent, fluent, fluent. Um, he, Robert Boy, what is actually um, featured in one of Land Rose's uh, songs, which I yeah yeah which I heard today. I think the name of the song is Paula. I think it's Paula, yeah. Yeah, it's Paula alongside, uh, alongside um, what's it? Tyler I see you. Yeah, mm. um, alongside Tyler I see you. And you know, it's <laughs> and I think uh, Robert Boy is sort of following um, 
trying to do sort of like a, a Ricky Rick uh, type thing um, where as far as his flows and his, and his entry into um, into a song. It, you can hear the influence, uh, yeah, yeah, Ricky Rick in, in Robot Boy. And it makes sense because of how close they were. Yeah, I wanted to say it makes sense. And it's a, it's a, it's a good thing because it yeah. shows where a person learned, you know, yeah. they were not just there in the studio, they were not just following around, they actually took some notes. And if they can do it well, why not? Yeah, why not? Because, um, and I, I feel like um, he's still trying to figure out his, uh, find his way around the whole yeah. uh, rapping thing. And uh, I believe that Robot Boy can only get better. Um, from, uh, from where he is. Yeah. yeah, I think it definitely will get better. The only thing I want from our artists, and I believe Robert Boy is doing it, is focusing, man. Yeah. Focus, focus. Like, because it's you, you gigging Thursday, as I said earlier, Thursday, sometimes Wednesdays to Mondays, you literally only have Tuesday to rest, like at night. Yes, you yeah. can rest sometimes during the day, by the time they're on the road, they're doing interviews. They're going to um, publications, you know, the radio, they're doing a lot and they burn out. So it's um, so I appreciate what um, Doss did, Doss, the guy behind him landed. Yeah. I think a few weeks ago, he went live on Insta and he was like, guys, I'm not, I'm not okay. I'm not grand. I need to take a break. I'll be off social media for a while. I need to check myself in somewhere. You see like those 21 day mental check-ins that some places do stay there for 21 days. Yeah, he he acknowledged the fact that he's not okay, because it takes a lot. Because especially one thing I always say, besides entertaining people for five days out of the seven days in a week, guys, sudden, or how can I put it? Sudden money number one <laughs> will rock anyone. Yeah. Number two, being famous out of the blue, because we slept today to choose. We didn't know anything about this boy. We wake up on a Wednesday, he's all over. Mm. You know. His contacts are bringing up. His followers are crazy. Maybe he had 1K, now he has 10K in the space of 24 hours. Yeah. That's a different kind of attention you were not used to. Now the girls are looking at you differently. The people attract, you're attracting are coming to you because now they want opportunities. Yeah. Not everyone is coming to you with good intentions. People want to start using you for the money, for, for the gigs, to, be, to get a rider package, you know? Yeah. So now you, you're constantly in a state of, I need to keep my guard up because I don't know who's there for the for the right reasons. Yeah. And that messes you up mentally. Looking at your bank account, last week your capital ticket available balance of 1K. Two weeks later, you see them on 80K from two gigs only. Like if I can make 80K in two gigs, in December, I could be a millionaire, you know? Because yeah. I can peak literally for five days in a week. So all of those things play a huge role. And if you're not focused, you're going to lose it all. You're going to get messed up. That's yeah, one I'm, thing I pray for artists. I pray for them to focus more than anything. I need them to align. Yeah, like a, a lot of them, uh, because I feel like um, they shouldn't be driven by the money or the money that they can potentially make. They're, just because you are a big artist, you suddenly blow up does not necessarily mean it does not uh, it doesn't mean that you have to take gigs um, from yes. Thursday until until yes. Sunday. Like um, you have to pace so they have to pace themselves. They have to yes. make sure that they take care very, take very good care of themselves. Like just because someone says that they want to book you does not mean that you have to take that booking. Take the gig. Yes. Yeah. Like even but if, if they genuinely want to, they can even book you in two weeks time. Yeah, if they if they really want to, and also like looking at the the kind of gigs that you do, that the distance that you have to travel, like just proper properly planning your your events. You don't have to travel the entire country in in one exactly. weekend. You can do maybe two provinces an entire weekend to say uh, this weekend I'm in Gauteng and I'm in Bumalang. Um, and next week, I'll uh, probably be like in in KZN or uh, yeah. KZN and uh, well, well what's your ways? Yeah, and the, and the Eastern K, uh, things like that, where you do not have to travel uh, long distances. Yeah. And also remember and that, to each other. yeah, and they're closer to each other. Remember that um, because that can also drive the price that you charge um, as an yes. artist. Because yeah. remember that if you are, like, 
it's, it's the same with everything else. As an artist, you are a commodity. And yeah. when you become True. rare, uh, become a rare commodity, uh, it's, uh, that's when you start to, to, your value goes up um, significantly. If you decide yeah, that true. I'm doing I'm doing three gigs uh, per weekend, I'm doing one on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That means That's that it. yeah, that means that the the money that you could have made from other gigs, you could incorporate it into um, uh, these three gigs if that's what you want. And uh, that's yes, when yes. people will actually want to if if they want you bad enough, sure. they're definitely going to 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 pay that that amount of money yeah. and now you're doing just gigs you are making maybe um close to the, the same amount of money as before um you have fewer people that you have to take care of around you uh, because now you have a, a proper management team that is doing uh, what well, everyone that is around you, is doing, yeah, yeah everyone yeah. around you has a job that they have to do because it would it and and that's the one one of the things that is destroying a lot of uh yeah. the, the the young artists yeah. having too many people around uh like yeah. they, and they have too to many understand. wrong people around yeah too many too many wrong people someone who's just there for your riders when when you have to go yeah. gig uh someone who's just there to to pick up women when you have to go gig a concerts are never understand by the way I am, I've been, you know, I've known a lot about the industry for years and I still don't get the right concept. You know, I and, and, it, and it gets crazy. Especially how expensive it is. Yeah. Sure, you, can, you say you guys want drinks, but there's no point for you to have five guys you're rolling with and all of them want five different bottles. These bottles need to have mixes. Now they want hubbly bubbly, they want platters. I'm already paying you 50 pal. And now and the rider different. itself is 15K. Yeah, I'm making a loss in this entire situation. I really don't get it right. Okay, I can't. You know, I've worked in promotions as well. I've worked for a club as well, and I still don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Being in the industry, I'm like, chap, I'm doing this thing. Yeah. I'm finding out how much the rider is, you know. I'm finding out how much the booking fee is. On top, the thing is, also, I think for me, what makes it even wilder, like a wilder concept, we're paying for you to perform, right, with the DJ. So, for example, the 50K is going to cover you, your DJ, and maybe your photographer or your, your driver cool yeah then there's rider for all of them cool we're paying for your flights okay paying for your accommodation okay so now and all this money that you're paying for to you what is it for you know and in some instance for for artists that go perform internationally they also demand like a, a certain uh pocket they demand pocket money as well uh for each day they probably like if you go to England, for instance, they probably tell you that each day is maybe like a um, hundred pounds, or for for instance. You know how much pounds day. are. Guys. Yeah, yeah, that's like two grand a day. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> no way. It's like guys. two grand a day. Like the, the right of the concerts, I never understand. And I always say, guys, one thing about me, like I'm very big on artist management, right? I still want to do that to this day. Yeah. And as much as I want my artists to have like that rider list or whatever can you can you be considerate also another thing i'm very very finicky on there's no like i really don't understand why i'm managing someone who has five gigs in one night and with every gig they get to they want the part of him how they're going to get to the fifth gig how they're going to perform because as my artist i need to give the the people at the last gig the same energy you gave at the first gig yeah, respect them that much because they came out for you so if you're drinking five bottles of Hennessy that one night tomorrow it's a gig again it's a Thursday maybe you get on Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday. so in one weekend you alone get 25 bottles of Hennessy and you're expecting to shut down and I as a management I'm, I'm saying that thing is okay you're going to shut down you're going to collapse on stage you're going to you know yeah, that's why I feel like management is very important like a lot of these new artists are not educated when it comes to the music industry and the music business as a whole. They don't have PR teams, they don't have management, marketing is off, people are not showing up for gigs because they overbooked themselves or they double booked themselves, they couldn't make it on time because they were tired, their driver couldn't drive. It's a lot of things people don't look at because of the sudden fame they're getting. And it's part of the reason why a lot of artists eventually end up broke um, because they get themselves into deals that are not favorable to them simply because of the poor management that they have. 
Um, yes. Because a manager, a good manager, is supposed to get you proper legal representation for someone yes. who's going to properly look into your contract. And that manager itself, they also have to know what is in your contract. They have to be able to negotiate what should be in a contract and what shouldn't be in a contract. Um, they should be able to negotiate your in the, an entire contract for you um, without you necessarily having to be part of uh, the negotiations. Yes. Um, yes. And it's also, it just so happens also to be, um, I think, AKA uh, with the whole Reebok thing. I think it was a exactly. similar situation where his exactly. manager um, apparently they negotiated the contract for him. And it was a crazy contract, by the way, um, for him not to be, I, I think he was paid with the sneakers, if I'm not mistaken. That was his pay, um, partly. Imagine. Yeah, it, like it's, a, it's an incredibly- Knowing how much they sold for. Like it's an incredibly terrible deal. He, he advertised Reebok for that moment. And do you know the reach that Kenan has? It's crazy. It's so crazy. for them to feel like they came via sneakers and for his management to agree to that it's, it's just so hard to me yeah like because your management is supposed to negotiate for you to get paid in cash like you don't care about the sneakers already oh, I buy my own sneakers. For free. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, buy my I mean sneakers. give me money bro i can't pay with water with, with sneakers yeah because that, that aka deal by the way it basically says that he was not getting paid at all because he's supposed to get uh, the sneakers in any case. Um, people are, were supposed to, we were supposed to see him you know, wearing those sneakers in any case. Exactly. Um, so for him to be paid in sneakers, it was a terrible deal. It was really horrible. And that's part of where management mm -hmm. is supposed to come in, where cash is king. Always, cash exactly. is always king. Exactly. And we can't, as much as I want artists to be educated with music, right, in the music business, you yeah. can't expect them to know everything. At the end of the day, they are the artists. Yeah. That's why they have a whole team surrounding them from the smallest thing, which is like a makeup artist to a driver. Everyone matters yeah. because they can't do everything by themselves. You know, and that's where management come, management and PR, that's the most important thing because your management needs to make sure that they get you a driver who knows that they're at work because most of the mixed business is pleasure. This has been my boy for the longest time. He's going to be my driver cool but one thing he mustn't forget when he's driving into gigs he's working yeah, so he can't be, be within the bottle yeah. you understand yeah. you can't be within the bottle unless you guys tell him that day that okay we're celebrating our lives tonight we're going out we're all going out we're leaving the the, the viano at home we are ordering to the event yeah because he's also not working i'm not working no one is working we are turning up yeah, if but everyone... if we have four gigs as i said one gig is in Pretoria, the next gig is in Maponia more, the next gig is in Free State in one night, and my driver is drinking. Because already those are not those are not the right things to do as employees. Those are not right things to do as management, because these are things that management needs to look at. Yeah, it's a bad situation. Uh, and that's how we lost quite a lot of artists in the in the country because yeah. they they get right. they, they get drivers who are drinking with them. And this is someone who has who has been driving one. Who has been, they've been driving for hours. Um, driving is tiring. Guys. Yeah, driving is tiring. Um, they they've now been drinking. They are going to a place that they've never been to before on roads that been they've never driven on exactly. before. It's it's just a, a deadly combination. It's a it's a bad situation for for everyone. I mean, if exactly. your driver is your friend and they on on this night you say that we're also drinking. You can hire a driver. Like drivers can be hired. You can find someone drivers who knows exactly that they that they are that they are working now. They are working tonight, and they know that driving is the, is, is their job. Exactly, because there are, there are milestones as an artist to like to celebrate, like going going platinum. You know, reaching yeah. gold status yeah. and whatnot. And you're like, okay, guys, we did this together. You guys are my boys. You've been there since day one. We were walking to the studio, like Touchline says. We were walking to the studio. Now I got my ride. You know. Yeah. We we did this thing together from the beginning. Tonight we're all celebrating. We're getting a driver. That's cool. But when he's your boy, now you're mixing business with pleasure every night. You're letting him drink. I'm not saying like police him, but then when we're working, when you're pushing an answer, you don't get to work drunk. Yeah. Even yeah. you at times when you sign those contracts, you don't, you don't sign those contracts drunk. You don't go into um 
for example, the Batsu store and have a meeting with, is it like our or something like that? Yeah. Intoxicated. So. Don't do that. You respect your craft, right? You respect the job that pays you. So as a driver, you respect your job. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying don't hire them because now I'm a big sub, a fan of whoever you, you struggle with, big bread with them. It's fine. But let's all respect our position at every particular point in time. Yeah, and, and it makes sense because it, it's it's what we've been saying that everyone around you, if you're going to be keeping your friends around you, everyone should have a job. Everyone should have something that they that they do. Instead of hiring someone from outside to to come in and, and do a specific job that one of your friends can do, don't hire someone. Just uh, have one of your friends as an employee. Exactly. They they get like a proper salary like ev- everybody else. Like proper contract. They should. Yes, proper contract. The same contract. I don't care if you and I have been friends for 20 years, the minute we start raking it, we're signing contracts. Yeah, because everyone because should. Also, we need to have increases. We need to show what's okay. You are getting paid 15K this, this year. Three years from now, we're taking to 17K. Those things need to be documented, you know? Yeah. That's how so many friendships ended in the industry because of that, because of money. It, it, it's always about money. It's always about money. As you said, cash is king. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we listen to the music. They're trying to make yeah. cash, so cash is good. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I think we next week we we, sh- we have a surprise next week. Um, we have some guests that we'll be talking to. Um, so everyone should be looking forward to that. Um, and definitely. yeah, definitely. So it's going to be an incredible show. It's going to be a fun show. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to share the link. Make sure to share this with all your friends. Um, for but for us this week from the oracles. See you next week. Bye, guys. Yeah. See you next week.